welcome back to another episode of SustainaPod, a youth-led podcast for the youth and anyone passionate about sustainability across the world. I'm Rachel, and today I'll be hosting this episode of the Green Careers mini-series. In today's episode, we'll be focusing on the field of ocean conservation. We are honored to have Kevin So, a project manager for WWF in ocean conservation, with us today. After obtaining Hello. a <laughs> After obtaining a bachelor's degree in education for sustainability at the Education University of Hong Kong, he joined the WWF World Wildlife Fund. While he was working with the Shirehill Project to reduce claim harvesting activities, he also completed his master's degree at the University of Hong Kong. Thank you for joining us today, Kevin. Hello. So first of all, I would like to ask you some broader questions about your general field of work. Can you share more about your role as a project manager at WWF? Yes, yeah, so as a project manager at WWF, so my role is mainly to oversee the development and management of different ocean conservation projects with a particular focus on marine protected areas. So I would say MPA. So the, this involves engaging with a range of stakeholders such as the local communities, tourism business, and the even the scuba diving community to ensure that our conservation goals are being met. Additionally, I provide support and coordination for different kinds of ecological and social science surveys, monitoring, and citizen science activity related to the site-based marine conservation programs. So because uh, it's a scientific base at ENGO, environmental NGO. So um, overall, my goal is to ensure that our ocean conservation projects are effective and impactful so that we are making a difference in protecting our oceans and the habitats. Okay, I think a lot of jobs, like especially in the sustainability field, they require a lot of engagement with stakeholders because you have to consider everyone's like the pros and cons for each project for everyone, not just about the economic side, but also about maybe environmental side. So do you think this is part of why you decided to enter into this field of work or is there any other more significant reason? I would say is it, it would be the sustainability, the concept of sustainability, because it would be a core of our conservation work because sustainability means finding ways to protect our ocean and even human. And we our goal is to shape the balance between different kinds of aspects between conservation efforts, the social and economic needs of the local communities. So in my work, sustainability means identifying conservation strategies that are not only effective, but also socially and economically sustainable. So this requires engagement local communities and stakeholders to understand their needs and concerns, and so as to finding ways to incorporate their perspective into our conservation efforts. So I would say sustainability is meaning promoting responsible and ethical practice in management of our ocean and the resources. So I would like to put the focus on advocating for policy because it's also promoting the sustainable usage of our resources. Yeah. Okay, that's very interesting about your take on sustainability because throughout other guests that I have interviewed, they each have different perspectives about what sustainability means. Can you talk a bit more about how you entered and decided to work in WWF? Like maybe did your academic journeys or trainings or your education contribute to like your decision in working in WWF? Mm. So, oh, that 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 is a long story. So, why I choose in this field of work because uh, Hong Kong is best known as a financial center. I'm sure that knows it. But we we had really good marine biodiversity in Hong Kong. We record more than five thousand marine species in Hong Kong, and uh, even though Hong Kong is just a small place, the whole China we only. We only comprise around zero point zero three percent of the China, of the whole China. So, but we have already account for twenty five percent of the marine species record in China. So, actually, we got 
quite a lot in marine biodiversity. And what surprised me to get into the field is uh, Hong Kong has more hard corals than the entire Caribbean Sea. <laughs> and it's also hosts more mangrove, mangrove species in than the whole of East Africa. So actually, we got really good marine biodiversity in Hong Kong. But what triggered me um, to enter this field, I would say meeting my life coach, Dr. Zheng, Dr. Zheng Ziqiu from Education University during my undergraduate study, because I, I still, I can recall when I found out this professor, Dr. Zheng, he was looking for students to join a diving, scuba diving team during my second year in uni. So at the time, none of my friends were scuba divers, but I was drawn to the idea of exploring the underwater world. I was fortunate to be selected for the scuba diving team. So it was the first time for me to, to enjoy the underwater world. And then I, and I found my passion for the marine conservation. So his guidance and mentorship helped me realize the importance of protecting our ocean. And this experience changed my life and inspired me to pursue a career, my career in conservation with a focus on ocean conservation. And so after joining the diving team, so because we need to conduct our final year project before we graduate. So I chose a topic that required me to conduct an underwater ecological survey. So I was excited to pick this topic as my final year project because a lot of my classmates have any experience with scuba diving. And because I studied in education university before, most of my classmates, they, they picked the topics that was focusing on education in primary school and even in secondary school. So, I think I'm quite special and unique to choose a topic working in the ocean. So actually my project at that time was understanding the relationship between the seaweed, one seaweed, seaweed called sargassum, and the sea urchin during the winter's cold season. So it was a challenging and engaging topic, but I, I enjoyed every moment of conducting the survey and collecting the data in the field. So I would say this kind of experience first certified my passion for marine conservation and inspired me to pursue a career in the field. I think your educational background is a bit different from peers, like you just said, because you were more scientific, like you had more hands-on experience mm -hmm. than your classmates because they were mostly in the educational side. So now, since you also mentioned that WWF is like a, more scientific based NGO. Did you have any challenges that you faced when you first entered like into this field because of your educational background? Mm. So yeah, right. Because one of the biggest challenges we face is how to keep brainstorming new conservation projects that are effective and impactful and even align with our mission. Because to overcome this kind of challenge, because we have been asking frequently, we would say, I would say we rely on the expertise and the creativity of our team members because we travel with each other quite a lot. We discuss the, the ocean conservation issue. We continuously explore different overseas examples and learn from other good demonstration and experts in the field by keeping ourselves informed about to trend and best practice, we, we are able to generate new ideas and, and throughout engaging with local communities because we know their needs. So, so we also need to prioritize the collaboration with different stakeholders like local communities, business, government officials, and even other ENGOs. Because by working together, we are able to leverage our collective knowledge and resources to achieve our conservation goals. You guys would like come together and just work on new ideas. So from that point, I take that um like communication with members would be a very important skill for your job. Do you think that's like the most important skill or are there like even other skills that might work in your field or like mm. your work in particular? So I would say multitasking skills. 
are also essential for my job because in my role, I'm often required to balance multiple projects and stakeholders at the same time. This requires me to be organized, flexible, and able to prioritize tasks effectively because we got so many work to do. So I recognize the importance of balancing different interests and finding ways to shape collective values that benefit both the environment and local community is so important. To be effective, I have learned to be a good listener and communicator to understand different needs from our stakeholders because it also involves building a strong partnership and collaboration with a range of stakeholders. So I would say developing strong multitasking skills has been essential in my work yeah, because I'm able to juggle multi-projects and priorities while achieving our conservation goals and promote sustainability of our ocean. It's actually kind of funny because a lot of people would usually say multitasking is not a good thing because <laughs> it like strains your way your attention from one specific thing that you have. But I think for your job, Multitasking might be helpful since you have a lot on your hands and you can't just like focus on one thing. This might be very useful if anyone is also interested in doing project heavy jobs like yours. So we're moving on to more specific questions about your current career in WWF. So I've heard that you've implemented this project called Share Health Clan Project and can you elaborate more on what it is and how did you implement this project? Okay, so it's also a long story because I've been working in Suihao for five years. So actually Suihao, one is a unique area comprising different kinds of coastal habitats, including marsh, mangrove, intertidal sand and mudflat, and boulder shores, etc. So to its diversify habitat features, it supports a relative high biodiversity. So including the endangered marine species, horseshoe crab, so, but Soihou has been facing a high level of human disturbance and pressure from recreational activities such as the clam harvesting. So the unregulated clam harvesting is a serious problem. It can lead to the juvenile horseshoe crab being trampled and may change the composition and density of the benthic community structure. So actually, one of the target clam species called Meritus Meritus disappear quite a lot due to the unsustainable activity. So therefore, since 2018, after I came to WWF, so our team has been implementing a conservation initiative in Suihau through the support from ECF and Sustainable Land Office from the government. So in the past four years, with the increasing public awareness of clam digging in the government's potential conservation approach as a priority conservation site, more conservation measures are expected to be implemented in the near future. So that's why we hope to build up a relationship with the locals over the years to facilitate the local community engagement and even advocate for the holistic development of marine protected area approach in Suihau. So I would also want to share one of our work, one of our achievements in Suihau, because as, as I said, the claims, they are keep harvest by the recreational activity. So to, to address this kind of impact, we produce a, a conservation tools called Cam Gauge. So actually it's a cut with a hole. So we have, because during our research on clam harvesting in Suihau, we encountered a challenge. There were no existing cam gauge in Hong Kong to use as a reference point because cam gauge is a useful conservation tool for people to recognize what kind of immature clams they should release and what size is meaning the mature clams. So to overcome this challenge, we conduct a wide range of literature review and study the overseas example to develop our own principle for measuring and monitoring the clam population. So by making a multidisciplinary approach and drawing the knowledge from different resources, we develop a set of principles to measure and monitor the clam population in Sui Hau. So, I hope people can use, can apply our clam gauge and make a sustainable harvesting practice as we help. Our school, we went on like a field trip. For one of my classes, I went on a field trip to show you how. And 
before going on a field trip, I actually didn't know that this place existed. But <laughs> but like when I went there, I was really surprised because it's kind of like a mud flat, but it's like a really big beach kind of or mud flat. I'm not sure, but um, from what I've seen there, there are actually people still harvesting claim claims, and then they end up having these really big holes and then there are also like a lot of species washed up onto like on the surface of that hole and then because the class I was taking was environmental science and our teacher did talk to us about how like like these activities are actually damaging the environment and it's really interesting to see how you guys are protecting like trying to implement policies to protect the claims yeah and also other than the claim, I also see like saw mangroves there, um, but a lot of them were like destroyed because they're kind of wrapped in plastic and also strings. Mm. So we did try to like clear them out, but it was really hard. As you said, the government is having an increased awareness of this issue, and I really hope that they like the local community can also like help with restoring the ecosystem as well. So yeah, as you mentioned that you guys would work with the local committee to increase the awareness, what kind of like advocacy methods do you think it's most effective in promoting public engagement to the issue? So yeah, you are right because advocacy is is crucial part of my job at WWF because effect, effectively promote public engagement in ocean conservation. I believe advocacy is a must to, to promote. So actually we have been using the social media platform, which is an effective tool for reaching a wide audience and raising awareness about the conservation issue. So by using platform like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, so we work with the KOL to share our conservation tools like the Cam Gauge and the Core of Conduct for climate activity. But I would say community engagement is 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 the essential one for building the support for the conservation initiative because you know the local community, they are the one who live there. So if they not agree your concept, your project, so it's useless to conserve an area. So, so that's why we're hosting different kinds of event, workshop, and actually just last week we brought the Shreha villages, including the village heads, one of our center in Hoi Ha Wan, because we have a marine life center at Hoi Ha Wan with glass bottom boat. So we hope to share what we have done for the ocean because the villagers may not know what the WWF is doing. So by hosting different kinds of engagement activity, we can connect with those people and inspire them to take action to protect the environment actively. And the first thing is education and outreach program are also effective to raise their awareness, to inspire people to take action. So we have also partnering with different kinds of school, university, community and organizations, such as the local interest group in Lantau, because we want to reach a wide audience and promote the sustainability of Shui Hao. So, but the most useful policy advocacy, because advocating the policy change is essential for promoting a long-term conservation goals. So we have also engaged with different policy makers because we also want to push for the stronger environmental regulation and promote sustainable practice and harvesting practice because it's a long-term regulation for protecting that area. Yeah, definitely. I think a lot of, not just NGOs, but like just different kind of organizations, they're using social media platforms. But the problem with that is that it generally targets the younger audience, but not like the older, like, generation where like they're living in that conservation environment especially in Shaihao because I know that more of the older generation live there so first of all like community engagement is a really strong point but also like what you mentioned about policy advocacy you said that you were like promoting different sorts of environmental regulations to the government but do you think that like marine conservation or just environmental conservation in general has changed much in Hong Kong in the past few years? Hmm. 
So I I think marine conservation have have a significant change in Hong Kong in recent years because because people I mean the Hong Kong public they they know more about the environmental issue because as you know during the COVID period because Hong Kong people they are not able to travel in other countries so they got trapped in Hong Kong so they they really want to enjoy the nature in Hong Kong so they spend so many time in weekends for the different recreational activities so i would say it's a uh, uh, increase the public awareness at least in the nature but uh, i would also say the corporate partnership is also an increased trend between ngo and business because as the trend of esg csr so this kind of environmental restriction to the corporates so this has led to the development of more effective strategies and initiatives from the corporate with the ngo to protect the environment so i think it's demonstrate a growing commitment to environmental conservation in Hong Kong. So while there's still much work to be done, but I'm optimistic about the future of marine and environmental conservation in Hong Kong. I'm not sure if I remember correctly, but like during COVID in Hong Kong, like there has been some issue with like the use of disposable masks because we're mm-hmm. using like basically two or three masks per day. And our landfills are basically filled with these sort of masks, which has like plastic components in it and I think that actually did also increase a lot of attention about just the pollution caused during COVID and definitely there was like a lot more sustainable practices done like reusable masks. Moving on do you have any goals that you would want to achieve in your work? So personal goal. So actually, I'm excited to be leading a brand new coral restoration program at WWF right now. So that will utilize our unique marine life center as a foundation outreach center for in situ restoration and outreaching program in Hong Kong. So actually, just in last year, November, we kickstart a program called Refining Our Corals Initiative in partnership with the Coral Academy at the Chinese University of Hong Kong to further promote coral conservation. So it represents an important step forward in our effort to protect the marine environment and promote sustainable development in Hong Kong because by partnering with Dr. Apple Cho, um, the research assistant professor in CHK, we hope to apply their innovative restoration expertise to make a significant ecological impact on coral conservation in Hong Kong. So we also hope to, by setting up a coral nursery and conservation hub at our center, we hope to support the different kinds of coral conservation projects and also engage different people to join, to take action in our program, such as nurturing our coral babies in the lab. They can also, we can also organize different kinds of public ed- education activity to promote conservation and even scale up the coral research with CHK. So our main goal is to restore the degraded coral habitats as ecological scale while exploring ways to increase the restoration effort scientifically. Yeah, definitely. I think coral, like coral conservation definitely has a very big, like, well, coral mm-hmm. conservation has like, it's not that significantly known as claim conservation in Hong Kong. So I definitely think that it's doable. So the final question is that what advice would you give to those who would like to pursue a similar career as yours, like in the field of ocean conservation? So if someone are interested in pursuing a career in environmental conservation, I would say get involved in different conservation initiatives and action, such as looking for different opportunities to volunteer to be as an intern if you are going to be in, in the university and joining different kinds of events because it could be your chance to know more people and identify your direction. Also, I suggest you can build up your knowledge because marine science, environmental science is essential for a career in conservation. So consider pursuing a degree or even attending different kinds of course to build up your knowledge and expertise. So if when you are 
in university, it's important to take advantage of different kinds of programs, such as the clubs, the activity are available to you, because don't be afraid to try new things and get involved in different initiatives. Just in my own experience, because I, I joined the scuba diving team uh, so randomly, <laughs> but I really treasure the experience that allow me to develop my skills, explore my interests, and even learn from my mistake in a supportive environment. Because in a university, it's like a safety net that provides space for you to go to learn with limited consequence. So it's a time when you can take risks and try new things without worrying too much about failure. Because by joining different programs, you can make most of your time and gain valuable experience that will help you in your future career, whatever even is in conservation uh, aspect. So my advice is to be proactive, get involved in different programs, make the most of your time in university will help pay hard don't be shy to step out of your comfort zone and try new things because you never know when your interests and passions may lead you to anywhere that was actually really helpful for me personally because i would also want to pursue an environmental career so yeah i'll definitely take mm. your advice into being more proactive in university because i'm quite of an introverted person <laughs> at school as of now but definitely I'll like, yeah. try to find more opportunities to get to know more about like the field of work in general so thank you to Kelvin for joining us today and thank you to Singapore listeners for tuning in with us this week um, as always we would love to hear from you about this episode so let us know any questions and comments by messaging us at sustainapod underscore gih on instagram or email us at sustainapod at gmail.com see you next time